It's time for advice of counsel. We welcome in Locked On Panthers host Julian Council. Julian, who is the prime suspect for the offensive inefficiency? And there's a lot of leads. Quarterback play, receivers dropping the ball, the offensive line, and coaching as well. Hmm. That's tough because <laughs> you're right. There's everyone's to blame. Sam Darnold, first play of the game, interception. Throw the ball away. For the first couple weeks, made a lot of good decisions, but we've seen the last 10 quarters, dating back to the second half against Dallas, he's now thrown, uh, what, six yep. interceptions? Had another fumble today. That's just not winning football. But is it all on Sam Darnold? No, of course, the offensive line's no good. Four sacks again today, even though I didn't really think they played that bad against the Vikings, but they still weren't good, didn't make him feel comfortable. And looking at the play calling, didn't seem like Joe Brady had a lot of confidence in trying to throw the football, whether it was his lack of confidence in Sam Darnold or the offensive line's ability to hold up when they asked them to. They did not. And also, you bring it to wide receivers. Ten drops, was that what it was today? Robbie Anderson, who last week was had a sideline tirade, temper tantrum, whatever you want to call it, and called out the play calling and thought that they should have been trying to do a double move. That's if the offensive line would have allowed them to. He goes out there in no shows on Sunday and then has the goal not to even speak to the media after being one of the headlines of the week, right or wrong. I never really felt like it was that big of a deal, like, like seeing the emotion. But if you're going to show that emotion, then show up again on Sunday. So I bring up the offense line. I bring the receivers. DJ Moore also had some drops today. Chuba Hubbard out of the backfield. He had some drops. He's not a very good catcher anyway. And then Sam Darnold. Okay, so those guys are all on offense. So who's the coach for them offensively? It's Joe Brady, right? The same issues we saw last year of red zone inefficiency, not showing up in the third quarter, and just being able to have consistency throughout the game, that has to fall on the coordinator. The same guy that we hear about being talked up for a head coaching job. Oh, Las Vegas Raiders job's open now. Joe Brady should be the head coach. Co coach Ed Ogeron out at LSU should bring back Joe Brady down on the bayou. What has Joe Brady shown us through 22 games that makes anyone believe that he should be a head coach of any of the 32 NFL franchises. If I'm going to bury anybody off of what we've seen over the last two seasons, especially without Christian McCaffrey and the offense basically coming to a halt without him at least this season, the last three weeks, it's got to be Joe Brady who takes the brunt of the blame for the Carolina Panthers offensive efficiencies through six weeks. All right, let's uh, try to be somewhat optimistic here. Does Carolina's comeback, sure. Julian, and the next two games being against the Giants and the Falcons put a temporary injunction on this be being the beginning of a long losing streak for Carolina? Yeah, I don't see a five-game losing streak happening, not even a four-game losing streak. Starting off 3-0 was fantastic. We've had the conversation. We knew that a lot in large part is because they faced Zach Wilson in the Jets, Davis Mills in the Texans, and they got the Saints at the absolute perfect time. And the defense was fantastic. McCaffrey was healthy. Darnold was running for touchdown after touchdown and taking care of the football. Things were good. The vibes are good here in Carolina. Dallas, no shame in losing to them, but the last two weeks, the inexplicable loss last week against the Philadelphia Eagles and then today against the Vikings where Minnesota really let them back in the game and give the offense credit for coming back. Like, the Dallas Cowboys lost, okay, but the last two, those were games that you don't expect to lose. Maybe Minnesota's one I kind of felt like maybe, yeah, they would lose. I thought they were going to lose going to today. So it's not really a bad loss per se, but it's not like the Vikings are a great team and they're right there in – the position to be a potential wild card opponent for the Carolina Panthers as we head towards December. Now it's a long way to go, and there's 11 weeks left in the season. They're three and three. It's year two of a rebuild. They have help on the way. Stephon Gilmore, remember him, folks? Everyone was excited about him about a week and a half ago. He's going to play on Sunday at MetLife in the Meadowlands. That's exciting. C.J. Henderson was out today. He's still on this roster. They have an opportunity to get better, and McCaffrey will eventually be back. The New York Giants are not a good football team. Granted, neither are the Philadelphia Eagles. The Panthers lost them. And the, the Vikings are a so-so football team, probably right there on the same level, level playing field as the Carolina Panthers. They should beat the Giants next week. And then on the road against Atlanta, I know historically the Carolina Panthers have not played well down I-85 South in Atlanta. The Falcons are so bad. The Panthers cannot lose these next two games. They get back to 5-3 and three when New England comes to town. The vibes will be good again, but right now the vibes aren't good. I don't see a long losing streak. I do see the Carolina Panthers being able to bounce back next week and the week after. Fingers crossed, getting back to 5-3 and three when they come back home, sort of. I'm sure there'll be plenty of Patriots fans in the stadium in week nine against New England. All right, uh, speaking of those negative vibes, those dark clouds hanging over yeah, Carolina, Julian, uh, who, who are McCaffrey's injury woes kind of an indictment on? You know, the team's usage of him, his training injury luck. I mean, what do you peg this on? 
The man upstairs, the football gods. I, if you believe in that, it's, I don't know, it's bad luck, honestly. You look at last season, the injuries that he had, and I, I understand, I'm, I'm one of the people who's in the boat of, I don't care, give him as many carries as possible. I'm also in the boat of, you don't pay running backs big contracts. We've seen what's happened to Todd Gurley and David Johnson after they get signed, and it's just bad luck more than anything. And maybe it is wear and tear on his body, because as soon as Christian gets the bag, he gets hurt. And last season, the ankle injury, week two against Tampa Bay, I mean, how are you going to not have that happen? Like, a guy falls in your back of your leg. It happens every game in the NFL. You see it. It's just bad luck. And then he comes back later on in the season at Kansas City. Danny, Danny Sorensen, the safety for the Chiefs, pile drives his shoulder into the ground. It happens. It's football. Now, the groin injury that he suffered later on trying to work his way back, it's probably more McCaffrey trying to work harder. This year, the hamstring, he blamed you were there a couple weeks ago. He blamed Thursday Night Football, the quick turnaround. And the NFL cares far more about money than actual player safety. Don't ever let them tell you otherwise. And Christian McCaffrey, exhibit A of that, where the hamstring, that's quick turnaround. He thinks that definitely played a role. And then whether he had a setback or not, Matt Rule says there's no setback, but it's weird because he was on IR and now he's all, all of a sudden on IR for the next three weeks. Clearly there was a setback at some point this week. It's just dumb luck, really. It's football. I get it. You touch the ball 59 times through the first two weeks. Eventually, you're probably going to suffer injuries. But you play football, you play a running back position, you're going to suffer injuries. Like Dalvin Cook, who was just healthy today, has not played the last couple games because of an ankle injury. Is that because Dalvin Cook you know, gets too many carries? He's got a ton again today. Or is it just it's football, it's a physical sport, and sometimes – this stuff happens. I feel for Christian. I know there's going to be plenty of conversation about the contract and everything else surrounding that. But really, it's just dumb luck. And I hopefully he can be back in a couple weeks against New England, or if not, then later on in the season can contribute for this team because he really is a special talent. And we're all being robbed of that right now because of the injury luck. Julian Council, host of Locked On Panthers, Daily Panthers podcast, buddy. If they lose to the Giants, you're going to have quite the case on your hands for the rest of the year. <laughs> Look, folks, if they lose to the Giants next week, I got nothing to tell you. <laughs> like, nothing. I got nothing else for you. <laughs>